In this video, we're going to be talking about emotional archetypes. And this ties in with the video previously done about eliciting emotional responses. So remember with these archetypes, these are not rigid structures. In the human expression, we've got to leave room for variety. However, the emotional martyr is one of the most common of the emotional archetypes. I am content to die for my beliefs. So cut off my head and make me a martyr. Now, just like in history, when the martyr was put to death for their beliefs, and oftentimes this would come from a religious context, the emotional martyr is also willing to be killed or put to death for their beliefs. Now, being killed isn't so much a, a literal sense, but more a metaphor for their potential, for their opportunities, for their quality of life. And what tends to happen with emotional martyrs is that the very belief that they guard emotionally is the one that causes their suffering. In experience, there's always an excuse and a reason for everything. So not necessarily for things outside of their control, but also inside of their control as well. You've got to remember with a martyr, they are willing to be put to death. So the suffering is a major part of their existence. And we're not talking about suffering as it exists extrinsically in circumstances we cannot control. Loss of life, bereavement, sudden illnesses, you know, sudden losses, but the suffering that they are in control of and it's heavily guarded by emotion. But the emotion that is guarding these beliefs are often anger, resentment, frustration, and a deep sense of guilt. There's a fantastic quote by Friedrich Nietzsche that says, a martyr's disciples suffer more than the martyr. And that couldn't be more true than the emotional martyr, for their disciples, in essence, are their friends and their family, their loved ones that care about them, that are trying to support them and wonder why the suffering is built into their very existence. They're trying to help pull them out of it and to stop them from being killed. And it becomes when you're exchanging with an emotional martyr, even though they are not necessarily committing what you would refer to as emotional abuse, there's still that eliciting emotional responses because then in essence, the disciples of the martyr are then feeling like they pity or they worry or they end up taking on more than they can to try and move this individual forward. But where the martyr is stuck in resentment, in guilt, in shame, etc., then it's very difficult to move someone past it. And oftentimes they will get bitten in the process of trying to introduce an opposing thought, an opposing perspective, or even trying to introduce something new that could break the cycle of the martyr wanting to be put to death or to suffer. Oftentimes emotional martyrs will also attract disciples in the form of nice people, nice guys and nice girls who wouldn't want to see an individual suffer and would do all that they can to prevent this from happening. On the flip side of the nice guy and nice girls that are also attracted to these martyr individuals is also those that are attracted to burden and attracted to darkness. For being involved with someone that is in this way, there's a constant need to be supportive and constant need for them to have drama of inside of their life, trying to support someone who is willingly ready to die for the same beliefs that cause their suffering. There's often an idonym which states cutting off the nose to spite their face. So this could be in a context where they would do something which they think may be at the disadvantage of somebody else or maybe at the advantage of themselves and it actually turns out to be the opposite. So cutting off their nose to spite their face could be someone who refuses to go to a party and says, oh, the 20 people haven't texted me, only five of them have said they want to see me there, what about the other lot? I'm not going to go to the party. Now, in essence, they're cutting off their nose to spite their face because they may actually benefit from being at the party and deep down they want to be there at the party, but they're eliciting this emotional response that says they're willing to suffer because the belief is, is that all 20 of those people at the party should have contacted them. Therefore, they're going to stop this opportunity to go out there and actually enjoy themselves. The hardest test for an emotional martyr to go through is the fact that it's difficult to give love as well as receive love. Now, if this emotional martyr is built into them that I'm always giving, I'm always giving more than people and everyone's just taking from me, then the giving process isn't the part. It oftentimes is the receiving aspect to it as well. And if they are giving, oftentimes emotional martyrs will also give an expectation of a reward coming back. So they wanna see the law of reciprocity come back to them. However, we know that's not always a given in exchanges with individuals. So they're often left quite butthurt and quite resentful about the amount that they give. And there's a lot of introspective work that needs to be done. And the introspective work will go along the lines of trying to ascertain and identify what is that solid belief that is guarded by the anger, that's guarded by the frustrations, guarded by the guilt that prevents them 
from receiving or entertaining or holding an opposing thought, thus hindering their ability to be able to truly receive the love that they claim they are giving because it's who they are. The Mata, in essence, is a master at using the eliciting of emotional responses to justify the suffering they're experiencing. People will always remember it. 